Welcome to the Infinite Spark of Being podcast. My name is Keith Welsh, and today we continue taking apart our identity. Um, last week was just a little, just start asking a few questions, you know, like what does objective mean? What does subjective mean? What does existence mean? And you start to ask enough of these questions, you start going, man, Keith doesn't like exist as an objective truth. Right, Because I have an identity for myself and I think that I'm this and I think that I'm that. When someone sees me and they don't know me, they don't think those things. In fact, getting to know someone, I would say, is partially them trying to convince you they are who they think they are. And then it takes you to that old Ram Dass thing where he would say, I'll pretend you are who you think you are if you pretend that I'm who I think I am. And as long as we keep that agreement together, we'll be fine. Right? So... You just start to ask enough questions where you go, okay, so my identity is just a concept and I'll struggle with it to the extent that I need others to buy into it, okay? Meaning that if I'm really attached to being a nice guy, I'm, I'm a nice guy. I'm, I'm just the nicest guy. And now I need everybody else to believe I'm just the nicest guy. Or I'm so just thoughtful and wonderful and I need everyone on board with that. That's going to be a real problem. And this process of self-inquiry is going to be a real problem because you ask enough questions and you realize that that's not objectively real. It's a concept. Concepts can't have objectivity. So... This next uh, episode here is going to be more finding awareness and how to hang out with it, spend some time with it. Um, All of these correlate to the discussions that we do on the Patreon. And on that note, go to the website, theinfinitesparkofbeing.com. You'll notice a button that says participate, donate. Um, If you'd like to participate in these discussions, subscribe to the Patreon Um, The tiers are there. There's a journey tier, an awake tier, and an insight tier. Read the descriptions. uh, Get hip. Join us. Uh, This is just a community of spiritually minded people that are just regular folks. Um, If you don't want to subscribe to Patreon and you just want to be a part of it, $20 through PayPal or Venmo. Just get me your email address that I can add you to it. All good. Um, You'll have fun. Uh, If you like this content, you enjoy what I'm doing, you enjoy the content that I'm making, feel free to donate through PayPal or Venmo. Um, You know, I know that these ads on this thing are annoying and I'm going to be stopping that. Um, It's not benefiting me financially, it's just annoying, so I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, If they're on this one, I apologize in advance, Um, I'm going to turn it off. So I got to figure out how to turn it off. Uh, essentially you, when you decide you're going to make a podcast, you sign up with a distributor and they're like, Hey, you want to make some money? And you go, yeah. And they go, all right, click these boxes, tell us what you're about and we'll assign advertisers to you. And then you end up with a synthetic, synthetic breast milk ad and a little girl's illustrated Bible book. I don't know. It, it happens. I don't know what to tell you. Um, anyway, uh, so I'll be turning that off. Um, if you're interested in spending some one-on-one, sorry, if you're interested in spending some one-on-one time, you would like to start a meditation practice, deepen a meditation practice, start a spiritual practice, deepen your spiritual practice, and you'd like to pick my brain, you'd like to talk about it, you'd like some help with that, reach out through email or direct message via Instagram, preferably. I don't tend to check the Facebook one that's associated with the Infinite Spark of Being. So as much as I check my personal Facebook messenger, because I one of my hobbies is to um, try to lowball people selling boards on Marketplace. So I'm one of those people. Because I'll offer you three fifty for it. Um, but I paid $2,000. Okay, so um, that uh, the store is there, third book on its way. Uh, also, there's a sub stack now. I've been writing these essays. You'll notice on Instagram, I put them in my stories and a link to my sub stack. I will also be offering audio versions of that. 
I'm currently in the process of funneling all these things down. Also, follow the infinite spark of being as a teacher on Insight Timer. I have binaural beats that are showing up on there with guided meditations. Join it. Follow me on Insight Timer. Um, these things are effective and they work. So, okay. Also, there's an app on the way that will have all of it. But until then, follow me on Insight Timer. As a teacher, the infinite spark of being. Okay. So, uh, last week, again, we started to whittle away at identity and things like that. Um, this week, a little deeper. So, when my mind races, and it does, especially, uh, well, every night I wake up, I guess it's the wee hours of the morning, around 3.15, 3.30, and if I lay there, my mind just thinks of everything, and it's never good, and my dreams are never good. They're usually weird, uh, dark, literally dark, actually. It's all, I was actually Googling the other day, what is it when it's dark in your dreams all the time? And, uh, you know, the response from Google wasn't, well, because you're doing awesome. Uh, (laughs) So, hey, we're all here. We're all here going through it. Um, My life is wonderful, so I don't know what that's about. But, you know, I think that the subconscious is kind of a bitch. And uh, my operating system operates from a place of fear and fear and a little more fear. So my whole path has been essentially trying to mitigate that, uh, not letting fear turn into aggression and things like that. So when the mind races, who is aware that the mind is racing? Well, I am. And these are little things that I do every night because whether you like it or not, you're not going to live in non-duality and I'm a soul and because then you just suck at parties. Okay, you got to do both. You're a soul, but you're also this person. You're also this organism, and you have all these proclivities and this way of being, and it's clumsy, and sometimes it's not, and da da da. And it's really self conscious about this, it's not self conscious about that. But you have that, and you know you're the soul, and you know that you're pure awareness, and you know that you're God. This is the secret of all occult, anything spiritual, all of it, is that you do both. You know, and you can retreat into the woods and live in a commune and do your best to only exist as an angel of pure love. But eventually, you know, the ayahuasca trip wears off and you got to go back to work. Um, Unless your parents are paying for you to live in a sprinter van in a national park, then I guess you can not do that. But in my experience, eventually life comes rapping at the door and you have to do something. So... My mind races, and it does it every day, and so how do I mitigate that and touch base with awareness? Well, there's a thing in me that's part of all of this that is simply aware, right? So uh, the cognitive, six cognitive faculties, the mind are judgment, perception, consciousness, language, memory, and thinking. Those are all things that the mind does, and it does those things to describe this consensus reality to us so that the nervous system will turn on, do things, and give us certain chemicals so we can survive. Okay. One of the things, well, something that wasn't listed in that list of six was attention, noticing, pointing. So there is a quality within me that just noticed that my mind was racing. It didn't have an opinion about it. It just noticed phenomena occurring the phenomena of racing mind. So that is neurons firing, creating thoughts. And there's a thing in me that just went "Hmm," there, just pointed at it. Then the mind steps in and goes, well, I don't like any of these thoughts. Sorry, I think I just bumped the camera. Um, I don't like any of these thoughts. We've got to change that because this is unpleasant. And now that you know that there's an option, the mind thinks of those options, considers those options and does something about it. Awareness isn't going to do anything to change the mind. Awareness is just aware, right? So that awareness is just blank and it points. But from that awareness is where we begin to notice and change and, you know, so the mind isn't the enemy. The ego isn't the enemy. You have to do both. But what's your essential nature? Essentially, you're nothing. You are just nothing. 
And for some of you that are really attached to being something, that is a very disturbing thought. Others, it doesn't matter. Okay, be nothing. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, death will either be absolutely nothing or I will go, holy shit, that was weird. That'll be it. Both of them, I'm fine with both. Um, I don't believe in any bad is going to happen when I die. Um, I believe it'll just be a change of mind. The mind will change. Because remember, the mind is the subtle body. The subtle body transmigrates with the self, the soul, the big self, not the little self. What we're taking apart is the little self. So there's a quality in me that notices, right? Uh, when it comes to my own depression, there's little thought exercises I've picked up over the years. Uh, one of them I heard from, a, from Ram Das, where he was... Uh, um, by the way, in that essay, Americans, the Spiritual Latchkey Kids of the Western World, I wasn't slagging Ram Das or Eckhart Tolle, a little bit on Eckhart. But um, those people are all very important to me. I cried more when Ram Das died than when my own father died uh, because I knew I'd never meet him in, in person, and that was hard for me because I just, he changed my life. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, he said this, somebody called him and they said, I'm, I'm depressed, I'm going to kill myself. And he said, okay. He says, um, are you completely depressed? And the person says, yes, I'm completely depressed. He goes, so you're noticing that you're depressed. Yes, I'm noticing that I'm depressed. Okay. Is the piece of you that's noticing, is that piece depressed or is it just noticing? That little click, that little, is, that's meditation. That's what the meditative practice gives you. It gives you enough space to go, okay, my mind is racing. I am aware that my mind is racing. And then we have two things. I am aware, period. The mind is racing, period. And now we have two phenomena. There's the phenomena of awareness that is just... And then there is the phenomena of neurons firing, creating thoughts, and then the awareness is experiencing all these thoughts. Okay, so what we really want to do is to stay plugged into awareness because that's, for right now, us. That's me. Uh, the thinking mind is not me because, and I know that it's not me because a thought is the result of a neural process. Thinking is several neurons firing and I'm thinking about something and those thoughts are trained, conditioned responses to external stimuli. But I, so I don't pick and choose which neurons fire. Everyone listening to this has experienced thoughts that they didn't want to think, memories they didn't want to remember, and all that stuff. And some of you, through these practices and things that, that have been shared, understand, okay, well, I can just simply be aware of that and notice it. And in that noticing, the thoughts seem to slow down, things seem to stop. Because my attention went from the thought to my breath energy flows where the attention goes. If you put your attention on the thoughts, you give more energy to those thoughts. Those thoughts affect your nervous system, your nervous system. So it just, right? The subconscious noticed uh, something in the environment, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and then it told the nervous system how to feel about that. And the nervous system told the conscious mind what to think about it. So the conscious mind starts elaborating on it. Now there's this other thing, awareness. You are aware that this is happening. Now, when I am aware and I redirect my attention, suddenly I have some semblance of control. Now, if I didn't choose the initial thought, but I chose or identified with the awareness that, that altered it or was the, the catalyst for changing it, then I would say that that is more me than the initial thought and the thinking. There's something else here. There's something else, and it's not the mind. It's not that. It's something else. And that thing is not a man. It's not a woman. It's not a... Therion, that whatever the bird people think they are. Like, it's, it's none of that. It's awareness. It's empty. In Buddhism, when we say that your essential nature is emptiness, 
That's what's meant by that, is that it's just nothing. It's just, and it's, you know, it's like, it's kind of like just moving your eyes around. You're noticing things, but you aren't thinking about them in an elaborate way. I mean, of course, the brain is going green, trees, da-da-da-da, right? But it's it. So you see, you, can't, you never really get away from the mind. You're not going to escape it. You're not going to escape the ego. You know, the second you, you know, take enough psychedelics to kill your ego, man. The second you notice that you've killed your ego, man, you're back into your ego. So... Or the mind. And the, the ego is a feature of the mind. Not a bug, it's a feature. The mind isn't a bug, it's a feature. All of these things allow us to get closer to our essential nature. We use them to wake up. We use the mind to identify closer to awareness. Like I've said, you're, you're never going to like get to the summit in a human body with a human brain. You're not going to get there through this. This is the practice. Right? There's a story in Buddhism where the guy goes to the teacher and he says, I want to become enlightened. How long will it take me? The teacher goes, hmm. for you, one year. He goes, oh, okay, but listen, I'm, I'm going to be very diligent. And I'm going to meditate every day and I'm really going to try really hard. And he goes, huh, all right, well... In that case, five years. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm going to work really, really hard day and night. I'm barely going to sleep. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the teacher says, oh, well, you know, in that case, 10 years. This is the annoying part of the path is that the more we try, the more we're kind of in the ego and in the mind. But that's what we're doing here. If you have an aversion to life itself, then, then the spiritual path is going to be Ugh, awful you know you might as well just go eat donuts and pizza and act like an idiot you know but if you're in you know if you're game for a good grind and a good like this is just gonna be yeah it's gonna be a lifelong thing then yeah do it if you're not down for it then I don't know don't do it it's not gonna matter you'll die one day and you'll wake up and go oh that's fucking weird in my opinion, I'm here and, and, and I, I like life and I notice that with the spiritual practice and a, and a spiritual perspective, it's all a lot more fun. It was Timothy Leary talked about learning to play with life rather than being played upon by life. Um, that's been the gift to me of spiritual practice is that I've learned that, oh, this is kind of something you can play with. And by play, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. I mean, like, you get to play. Like, the way a kid plays. You know, I, I've mentioned that experience I had with mushrooms where I got very sad because I realized nothing that I've ever done, whether it was music, art, or this, has ever mattered. And it never will matter. It's nothing. And I became very sad and I cried and I cried and I cried and I was alone in my house and I was like, oh God. But then at some point, I, but I had enough awareness to choose to stay with it and not push it away and just be sad. I'm just going to be sad. And in doing that, there was a shift. The poles shifted where everything was horrible suddenly became wonderful that, oh, this doesn't mean anything. Oh, perfect. It doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter in the way that, like, you play a game. And you play the game and you want to win the game. Every, nobody sits down at Monopoly and wants to go bankrupt immediately, right? Everybody that plays Monopoly wants to win. You don't sit down and play checkers like, oh, I don't give a shit, right? And if you play with somebody, like, that's so annoying. Some of you playing chess or checkers with them, and they just don't even give a shit. It's like, ugh, come on. You want the game to matter on some level, but if you lose, it's not the end of the world. It's like, okay. And if you win, it's not the beginning of the best part of your life. It's just, oh, look, I won. And you start to realize that that's life, and you realize that through the identification with awareness. 
Because awareness gives you enough spaciousness to slow down, enter into a new thought, meaning that you start to use a metacognition to think about the thoughts. Well, a step towards thinking about your thinking is awareness. Simply becoming aware of the mind's activity and going, oh, look at that, the mind is doing something again. Well, that's what it always does, and I don't have that much fun. So I'm going to think about it this way and see if I can increase my level of fun. That's all that's happening here. And yeah, I know you can yeah, but what about this into oblivion? You can bring up things in other countries and other continents that are going on. And you're welcome to it. If you'd like to sit around wringing your hands about that, that's fine too. That's good. Do it. Um, But there's a prayer, the serenity prayer. Some of you are very familiar with the serenity prayer. Because they say it at the end of all your meetings. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If you have a finite amount of prana or energy or life force in your body, and every single thing that you interact with, whether it's good or bad, takes some of that life force energy, it say it takes a unit, you see like millions of units, right? But it takes a unit every time. Where are you going to put those? Like, where are you going to invest that? You know, one of my teachers used to say you have a fistful of straws or something like that. But I think that's an old Indian idea that, you know, you have a fistful of straws and that's prana. Um, Yeah, so you lose a unit of energy. Well, where are you going to put it? You know, you're going to put it on something that, you you know, and it's my duty to bear witness to the suffering of like, okay. I was told recently that it was, um, and I agreed with the person, which was the kind of funniest part of the whole thing. I, I was uh, browbeaten and ear beaten with a TED talk about something that I agree with. I don't even know how we got there. I was just there to hang out in a hot tub and I took a fucking beating. Um, I don't even know what started this person's uh, speech. I sat and I listened to it. I mean, you know, I'm always game. And, uh, at the end of it, I was told, it is my duty to bear witness to this suffering and make people like you uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, I'm not uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know that I care enough to become uncomfortable. Um, but that kind of thinking is like, you're rotting yourself from the inside and you're not affecting anything. When you could take some of the energy you use to click on hyperlinks and read more about something that's driving you nuts, you could really take that energy and do something super fucking cool with it. Just so you know. I mean, is it a tragedy? Sure. Uh, There's that thing like... You know, a baby dies every 45 seconds. Oh my God, that's horrible. There's also a baby that's born every 45 seconds. Well, it's wonderful. Okay, well, it's both. Both are happening. You know, and you can't as possible pay attention to both. But if you have to choose, where are you going to put your energy? You know, it's tough. It's difficult. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, So where are you going to put your energy? Awareness? You know, soul? You know, I'm a human being having a spiritual experience or I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Like, I don't know. What what are you going to do? That is, again, this is self-inquiry. All paths are rooted in self-inquiry. You have to start asking and you can't be afraid to test and break your own ideas. Being attached to your own ideas is the best way to just rot. You're going to rot. You have to be able to push your own ideas. Push them until they break. See what happens. Usually what you're left with is some kind of truth. You know, but if you don't do that, you're left with just nonsense. Anyway. Okay. Um, Go to the website. Join the Patreon. Join the discussion. 
I'm going to do my best to turn these ads off. Um, my apologies if you have been um, annoyed or offended by some of the content of the ads. Um, whether it was children's illustrated Bibles or synthetic breast milk or mortgage stuff. Um, anyway, I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, I will talk to you next week. Join the Patreon, or at least try to join us this Wednesday for the Journey Group, uh, where we're going to break this stuff down more. Uh, join that spiritual community of everyday people. All right, I love you. Bye.